Good morning. A very warm welcome to you to St. George's Church this Easter morning. It's very good to have you sharing in our service in St. George's and those who are watching on our Facebook and YouTube channel at home. You're most warmly welcome. We're going to begin our service a little differently this morning because it's Easter Day from the door and we will put on the lights after the Easter candle has been lit. Our service is a service of the Holy Eucharist, a festival Eucharist, a service of Holy Communion. I would ask you when we come to the sharing of the sacrament, we're doing it here at the step There'll be two stations. We're not sharing the common cup at this time for well-known reasons. Please keep distance to other people before, behind, and on either side. And so as we prepare to meet with God this morning for our holy service, may I ask you to prepare your hearts by keeping a minute or two of quiet together. Would you please stand? Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age, for ever and ever. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Oh uh -huh. 
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We sing together our opening hymn, number 77. chains of death and hell 
Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way of life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Reading from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. We stand and sing together hymn number 501. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. 
So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. How much we need the Easter message this year. How much we need Easter. At the end of the First World War, Helen Turrell travels to northern France to put flowers on the grave of her illegitimate son, Michael, one of the fallen. To those traveling with her, she describes Michael as her nephew. So Rudyard Kipling, who lost his own son during that war, tells a short story. And Rudyard Kipling's story ends, a man knelt behind a line of headstones evidently a gardener, for he was firming a young plant in the soft earth. She went towards him, her paper in her hand. 
He rose at her approach and without prelude or salutation asked, who are you looking for? Lieutenant Michael Turrell, my nephew, said Helen slowly and word for word as she had many thousands of times in her life. The man lifted his eyes and looked at her with infinite compassion before he turned from the fresh sown grass back to the naked black crosses. Come with me, he said, and I will show you where your son lies. When Helen left the cemetery, she turned for a last look. In the distance, she saw the man bending over his young plants, and she went away, supposing him to be the gardener. One of the most moving verses in the Bible is in the gospel reading we've just heard. Jesus says to Mary Magdalene, woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. In Rudyard Kipling's story, Helen's mistake goes uncorrected. In St. John's Gospel, Mary's eyes are opened, and our eyes are opened. Mary rushes to tell the other disciples, who we learn from the other Gospels do not believe her. In Luke's Gospel, we hear that the disciples feel like her words are an idle tale. How could she say such a foolish thing at such a moment? Had she completely lost the plot? What happens to us when we find the world doesn't work as we thought it did? When we have lost the plot? when we don't know what to think, what to say, let alone what to do. Such is the time that we've been living in these last two years. Such is the time we have been living in since the 24th of February. What to think, what to do. When Mary Magdalene realises she's standing in the presence of the risen Lord Jesus, her first instinct is to cling to him, looking, touching, loving. All her assumptions of what the world is like have fallen away. Yes, she's lost the plot. The old model she had of how the world seemed to work suddenly didn't work anymore. She moved from knowing in the old hard-won way of how we think we know how the world works. She moved from knowing to needing. She wants, she needs to cling to Jesus. She doesn't try to bend the world to how she thinks it ought to be working. Rather, she moves into a new story. She's in new territory now. The shell of the old world is broken open by the unruly reality of new life coming out of old. So what does this have to do for you and for me in the new territory we've been in these last two years? What can we hold on to? What are we to make of it all? Faith is much closer to needing, yearning, than it is to knowing. To face our need of God moves us from knowing a thing or two, possessing, holding on tight. It moves us into the realm of trusting, believing, hoping, being open to being surprised, which is much harder but actually, it's so much more powerful. There is another, greater horizon. And we actually know this. 
Love is about trust. It's more about trust, belief and hope than it is about possessing and clinging. And creativity, we know this. It's about putting yourself out there, trying something new, trusting, being brave, courageous, enabling. It's not about playing it safe. It's not about being anxious, being wary of anything new. And this is what we heard in our first reading. Peter, in the house of a Ro Roman centurion, found that God loves the Gentiles, the non-Jews, just as much as he loved his own people. God's love is greater than just for one people. There is a greater horizon. There's a bigger picture. Do you see where the story is going? We're being led out of the prisons of our old ways of thinking we know, where one has to be right and the other has to be wrong, where one is domineering over another. We're being led into new territory, where we find inner renewal and hope in giving. We find reward in service. We find blessing in sharing and presence and delight in unexpected places. The gardener's infinite compassion. There's a story of an Allied soldier in the Second World War who wrote a letter to a German mother. He wrote, as a member of a commando unit raiding a village in France, it became my duty to kill your son. I earnestly ask your forgiveness, for I am a Christian. I hope I may, someday after the war is over, talk with you face to face. This German mother received the note some months later, and she wrote to the Allied soldier in turn, I find it in my heart to forgive you, even you, who killed my son, for I too am a Christian. If we are living after the war is over, I hope you will come to Germany to visit me, that you may take the place in my home, if only for a time, of my son whom you killed. This is towering. This is heartbreakingly moving. But it speaks, too, of hope. It speaks of new life, new possibilities out of the ashes. My brothers and sisters, we need to let God break us out of our cycles of fear, our cycles of bitterness and revenge and resentment, where everybody loses. Easter offers us a whole new way of seeing, being, and living. New life breaks through where all seemed barren and lost. In one parable, Jesus told of how it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I'm told that there was at that time a narrow gate in Jerusalem known as the Eye of the Needle. It was so narrow. And camels, which were used for carrying goods, could not get through this gate unless the owners unpacked them, took off all their burdens, all their accessories, and then they could just squeeze through. It's the same for you and for me. The new life, the resurrection life, requires us that we go through a narrow gate. We need to let go of old ways of fear, worry, reckoning, demanding, requiring. And we need to be inwardly renewed, spiritually regenerated. Daily receive life as a gift, a call to walk afresh with God, to give and to forgive. And we will find ourselves in new territory, in hope-filled, loving, life-giving, win-win situations.
we will be surprised by joy. How much we need to hear the good news of Easter today. Amen. We keep a moment of quiet before the quartet sing for us. Friends, may I ask you to stand as we renew our baptismal vow, the faith of the Church. Do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce evil? 
Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the head. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he is us, the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith. With all who have been baptized in your name, keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And because we cannot gather together for worship without praying for peace in the world, may I ask you to bow your heads in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, we pray for peace in our world and peace in our hearts. We pray for the people of Mariupol and Kiev, for the people of Ukraine at this time, and for all people in our world who are caught up in conflict and war situations. We pray for the leaders of the nations. We pray for wisdom. We pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our families, peace in our neighbourhoods and peace in our cities. We hold before God in, a, in prayer all who are longing for God's healing touch in their lives this Easter time. In a moment of quiet, we name them before God. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And we give thanks to God for our loved ones departed, who we entrust to the safekeeping of our Heavenly Father. We entrust them and all of God's creation to his merciful keeping. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. We offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. We sing hymn number 83.
bottom of page four in the yellow service booklets. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work from chaos bringing order and filling emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us, your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. and thanksgiving belong to you, Lord of all, for by the cross eternal life is ours and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden, the truth shone clear that he whom they had loved and lost was with them now in every place forever making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishers on the shore. He renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the Spirit, who sets the seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it's broken for you. After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Together, we now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death his glorious resurrection and ascension, 
and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single holy living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and that we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Be what you see, and become who you are, the body of Christ. The living bread is broken for the life of this world. And as our Saviour himself has taught us, so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
Let us pray. Lord of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Page 8, we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share his body live his risen life we who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand for the final blessing? God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect and whole in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you, and all those for whom you pray, this Easter tide and always. Please be seated for just a moment or two. Happy Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. It's very good to welcome you to St George's this Easter morning. Very good to have you sharing the service with us. As you leave the church, if you go into the garden on this side, you will see laid out on the grass the prayer labyrinth that we want to build this year. It's been beautifully laid out. I think it's by angels or fairies or goblins. I don't know who built it, who put, who put it up, but it's, uh, it's all set out. You can walk in it. And our, our project for this COVID time is to do something new. And we want to slow people down, help them to be reflective, meditative, prayerful. And to help that, we've built, we're going to build, we're going to build a labyrinth. It's set out be a little careful, it's, it's set out with a hose pipe, um, and I don't know how many holes the hose pipe will have by the time it's finished. But anyway, um, go outside and take a few moments to observe. This is what we want to do. We're nearly there with the, with the rate fundraising. We still need 6,000 euros more, um, but we've raised 16,000. And uh, anyway, go and have a look. It's in the garden on this side. And I can't finish the service without saying hello to Vicky and Dan. Vicky and Dan got married two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Go stand up and wave your hands and let everybody rejoice. Vicky, Vicky and Dan sent a picture from Loch Lomond, so I know where they've been for part of their honeymoon. It's lovely to have you here with us this Easter morning. What else? What else? I don't know. Let's, let's stand and sing our final hymn, number 75. <laughs>
go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.